could a man announce Jesus and die the way John died? What a stupid and foolish question. How could a man ordain Jesus to ministry and die the way that he died? So dying for the gospel for Jesus is a mistake. That is not how God rewards those who walk with him. Idiot. Tell us how the people who walk with God should die. That is what happens to a man when you become blinded. You calling John the Baptist blind? Are you calling John the Baptist blind? What happens to a man when you become blinded? What a mistake we have on the pulpit. What happens to a man when you become blinded? When Jesus was on earth, he said John the Baptist was greater than all men. Then a stupid boy is calling John the Baptist a blind. Then John the Baptist feared of the will of God. What? Then John the Baptist feared of the will of God. So John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Messiah, was not in the will of God? Now. The moment John the Baptist feared of the will of God, and he began to do and practice things that were not in his prophetic blueprint. In the scripture, nowhere John the Baptist left the will of God. This man is quack. That man is very stupid. This man is an idiot. There is nowhere in the scripture John the Baptist left the will of God. Then John the Baptist feared of the will of God and he began to do and practice things that were not in his prophetic blueprint. He became a prey to the enemy and he died cheaply. It is an accident to have apostles like this stupid boy from Nigeria. How can you tell us John the Baptist left the will of God and then you tell us he died a shameful death. Shame on you. Your time is over. Two people rebuke Apostle Joshua Simon over his teaching on John the Baptist. Now watch the word of Daddy Freeze. I'll be back. Thank you. As long as John was in the will of God, he had access to all that God intended for him to do. No one could kill him. No one could. People could persecute him, but he became invincible. He was immune because he was staying in the will in of my God. Opinion, the this moment is totally John the Baptist feared of the will of God, and he began to do and practice things that were not in his prophetic blueprint, he became a prey to the enemy, and he died cheaply. Hmm. The assignment of John was to be the forerunner of Jesus. And for as long as he understood that assignment, no, nope, stood upon nope, his no. watch. Hello, Apostle Salmon. I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I greet you and I bring glad tidings. I disagree with your teaching. Um, I want to surrender a body of scripture as what I'm citing to disagree with your thesis Acts chapter 7 if we were to read from verse 55 I'm reading but Stephen full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and saw Christ Yahushua standing at his right hand in the place of honor and he told them Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in a place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And he died. So are you trying to say Stephen was not in the prophetic word of God? That's why he was vulnerable? We've got to be careful when we're teaching. We need to teach the good news, the gospel, not the feel-good news. There is nowhere in scripture where Christians were guaranteed safety for preaching or standing with God. No, it doesn't exist. Out of the 12 disciples, 11 were died. One, John, fled into exile. Before he fled, he was boiled in hot oil. So how can you say that the moment John the Baptist departed from... So you want to tell me that when Paul was spied, he, was, he had departed from the word of God? Or when James was spied? Or when Peter was spied? No. That's a wrong teaching. And I'll advise you to apologize to your audience and take this back.
because scripture does not support this thesis and one of the problems i've noticed with you young pastors is you have a almost a cult following the people following you do not want to hear reason right now your followers believe i'm attacking you meanwhile all i'm doing is correcting you in love as a brother i'm going to give you another set of scriptures to support my thesis and if you disagree with me feel free to reach out i'd love to have a conversation uh, concerning this but while we're at it please you are a teacher that people respect make sure you teach them well so you will not be judged for misleading the people now here's a scripture where apostle paul talks about what he went through preaching the gospel and i'm taking this reading from second corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 are they servants of christ i know i sound like a madman but i've served him far more i have worked harder i have been put in prison more often been whipped times without number and faced by again and again verse 24 five times five different times the jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. This is what Apostle Paul went through. Are you going to say that because God was, uh, because he was no longer doing the work of God, that is why God allowed him to be flogged? Do you know what it is to be flogged 39 strokes five times? This is what these people put into the gospel so you and i can have a message to preach today so please once again correct this there is no promise for christians remember i know what the problem is you're going to the book of kings and psalms and proverbs and, and try to read about david david was not a christian abraham was not a christian they were jews they practiced judaism in first samuel chapter 18 verse 27 david went out and buyed 200 philistines and cut off their bolahon and brought the bolahon to Saul and Saul counted out the full number so that it would not be 199 they counted the bolahon imagine David going to kill the Philistines now eh? and he come out their bolahon I'm saying this because of censorship imagine seeing David returning today with a bag of 200 bolahon not be ritualist we will call him David was not a Christian. The things he practiced were not Christianity. And the favor, whatever it is he received from God, was not promised to Christians. So we've got to be careful before we go and pick someone that will sound like a ritualist as our mentor. If it makes sense to you, it doesn't make sense to me. Peter and Paul and John and James and Luke did not cut anybody dollar hole. The Old Testament has expired. In the New Testament, what we're promised is eternal life through Christ. And also, we're promised that he will take care of our needs. But along with that, if you preach the truth and you believe in the truth, trials and tribulations and what may, just like the apostles suffered, would also be the portion of those who preach the true gospel so let's not sugarcoat this once again i come in love and i bring my peace god bless shalom child of god welcome back my people new subscribers thank you so much for joining me returning once i appreciate your support thank you so much i'm grateful please this is disclaimer this video did not target to defame anybody's character is under fair use so credit to daddy fridge apostle joshua seman and this is my brother that i don't know his name i'm sorry i actually got the video from a blog on facebook if i see the link to the original videos in the owner i will put it likewise the one of seman and that of daddy fridge i saw all these videos on facebook but if i see it on youtube i will put it on the description so that i can go there and watch the full video now I think that the freeze has detailed this. I just want to say a little thing there. Number one, this my brother, the abuse is too much. Okay, the abuse is too much. It can actually correct same man without adding abusive words. 
this abuse is terrible. It now looks as if this your correction comes from a place of hurt. Whenever you are correcting somebody as a pastor or as an individual, please kindly address, I mean, biblical issue, address it without adding abusive words, without adding insults, whether the person is your enemy or the person is not your enemy. Please, so that it can sound good, okay? You don't abuse somebody in the name of correct, correction. Say man is not God, say man can make mistake. We have seen a lot of teachings of sermon that is very wrong, very wrong teachings. People corrected him without adding abusive words, although some, some did. Like the one he said that Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul teaching are wrong. That there is a place in the Bible where Apostle Paul, other men, ask women to sleep with men. There is no such place in the Bible. Somebody like Apostle Richard Takim came out and said no. That that teaching is wrong. You should show us where it is written in the Bible. A lot of pastors came out and re rebuke him. Apostle Terena, ter Apostle Tena, Tena, yes, Tena said no. There is no such thing in the Bible in the Scripture. There is no such thing. Doctor Ebed I Amina mean, the same thing. Many pastors came out and said no. So we have all these videos. Can you check them on YouTube? If you're on Facebook, check them. We we'll have them. Okay. Now, here again, Simon attacking uh, Apostle uh, John the Baptist. I like what that the Freeze did. That the Freeze addressed this issue issue maturely. You know, some of you guys, the members, will see it as attack as that the Freeze said. They see uh, that the Freeze is attacking our pastor, our pastor, because of what the pastor has made them to believe. Nigerian pastors will always make their members to believe that they are God. That they are, they are their God. They are God. Nobody has the right to correct them. That they, no, they, they can never make mistake. Forgetting that they are humans. That teaching is very wrong. Forgetting that they are humans. So once you're a human, you're a human being, you can make mistake. Same man is just a human being. He's not God. So he can make mistake. We must not be seeing him as God. That cannot make mistake. For me, this teaching is wrong. Very wrong. It's very wrong teaching. And the painful part of this thing now, these Nigerian pastors are doing it is, when they do that mistake, pride will not allow them to correct it when somebody correct them. Rather, they will send their members to go and attack the person, to make sure that the person, or they will even go and claim the person's video, to put down the channel, so that people will not see that you, correct, you corrected them. Even if you correct them in love, Apostle Joshua Seman, according to some bloggers, said that Seman has claimed their videos. He claimed their videos and terminated their channels, which is wrong. And they claim to be Christians. Even this one I'm saying now, he may even come to claim. But I believe that he will not because he has never done that to my channel and I appreciate him for that. I appreciate him for that. I will never say he did why he did not. That is very bad for me, okay? It will be very, very bad. So, Seman, please, sir. If you look at this correction now, I wish you can correct yourself. Go back to your study ground, reason again, and come back as as Dr. P Dr. Daddy Free said. Daddy Free said you should tender apology to your members. You must not tender apology, but at least you can correct it. That is another means of tendering apology. Because before you correct it, you have to say, oh, I'm sorry. Of course, it's apology. So I think Daddy Free is right. Before you correct, you say, oh, I'm sorry, I think this my teaching is wrong. I went back and I studied. Uh, if there's no pride, what you're supposed to be doing as a pastor is when somebody corrects you, you go back to your study ground. Look into what the person said. If it is true, you say, you come out without shame. Although some pastors does that, and I appreciate what they're doing, but pride will not allow our, our people to do it. You come back, you come out like this and say, oh, I'm sorry, I think this my teaching is wrong. I look into the correction from so and so brother or from me, from people. You know, I'm not God. That is how I understood it. But I think the way the the angle they came from is okay. I need to correct this for the benefit of others and also not to mislead those your members and as well mislead the next generation. Because if you plant bad and wrong teaching on your member, 
that member will transfer it to his children. And this is how the thing will be spreading. So we must learn how to amend or amend our teachings if needed, if necessary. We must not drop pride and say, no, I can never, I am this and that. No, sir. John the Baptist, John the Baptist was not beheaded because he left God. He has fulfilled his own tax. He fulfilled his mission on earth. The incident that happened did not happen because he left. Okay, if he put it like that, that means any Christian that is sick, is sick because he left God. That means all the disciples of Jesus that lost their lives in a mysterious way because they were paying, they paying sacrifice to see that this gospel is being spread abroad. That means they left God. That is to say that Jesus, when he was, uh, when he was crucified, he was crucified because he left his master. Is that what we put it? So, a, you're a Christian doesn't mean that you not pass through persecution. You don't pass through challenges of life. But we talk about persecutions of the Christians. So, you're a Christian, you must wait for that persecution. You must wait for persecution. You must wait for pain. You must pay all these sacrifices. But the Bible says that he that endures, he that endures at last, he that endures. So we must not be seen because some man actually seeing this as uh, John the Baptist was a sinner. He left God and now God now strike him. If you are not, if you are in a place of service, nothing will happen to you. No, sir. Even if you are in a place of service, even if you are serving God, or you are not serving God. So you serving God doesn't mean that nothing evil will happen to you, sir. Now, let's go to your village. Where you come from, Seman, a lot of pastors have been beheaded there by Boko Haram. A lot lost their lives. A lot lost their churches. Sir, does it mean that God was not with them? No, does it mean that they left God? No. These are men that pay sacrifice to see that gospel being preached in, in our land. So we must learn to appreciate these men. They pay sacrifice. They did. So John the Baptist was beheaded because that is he paid his own sacrifice. He paid his own sacrifice. Okay? He paid his own sacrifice. In fact, you need to let's, if you don't watch this one of that the freeze, please rewatch it. You need to watch that in ten times. To understand this teaching. I mean, say, man, need to watch it ten times, even the members, to understand the teach these teachings of that the freeze. Why I like that the phrase is that the phrase, whenever you want to correct, uh, correct you, you will correct you with scripture. He will back it up with scripture. Now, say, man, you can't even back this to your claim now with scripture. There's no scriptural backup. There's no scriptural backup. So, as a pastor, anything you are teaching that has no scriptural backup is not correct. Because everything you are teaching has scriptural backup. Everything is in the scripture. Although some people will go and bring one scripture, twist it to suit their narrative. So let's end here, please. All I'm saying is this. I have nothing against you, sermon. Okay? You are a human being. I want you to see yourself, to be seeing yourself as a human being that can make mistake. So when you make a mistake and somebody corrects you, sir, please, can you accept that correction? And go back to your learning ground, learn, relearn, and come out again and amend it or correct it. So that people will not be misled. Let's end here, child of God. Please, this is the camera. Again, I have nothing against him. This video did not get to defend their characters. So please, nobody should claim this video. This video is for Christians to learn. Okay? Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to support your sister by subscribing. See you guys next time. Bye.